Right, uh, welcome to Waves. Uh, we're going to start off with some wave uh, features, uh, types of waves, then we'll move into wave part, um, features of waves, slowly eventually getting into superposition and uh, wave particle duality of electrons and the de Broglie wavelength, etc., etc., later on in the uh, series of videos for waves. So um, we'll start off with the basic understandings of waves and the types. So we're going to start off with in progressive waves, eventually we'll get to stationary, but we're going to start with progressive waves. Now progressive waves transfer energy from point to point. So um, the two types of progressive waves are transverse and longitudinal. We're going to start out with transverse waves. So transverse wave. A transverse wave, excellent example of a transverse wave is uh, anything on the uh, spectrum, so light, uh, gamma rays to radio, everything in between um, is all transverse waves. Now, transverse waves um, are your standard sh wave shape. They look like that. They transfer energy from point to point in that direction. Okay. Um, so the idea here is, is that energy is transferred between two positions by movement of, um, could be, particles, um, although not all transverse waves require particles in order to travel. But if we are talking about um, a particle movement here with the transverse waves, then what we have here is we have a situation where particles are moving up and down. And that up and down movement is represented by each of these positions on the wave. So as the wave travels along, the particle from its equilibrium position will move up to a specific point, then back to an equilibrium, and then down to another furthest displacement point there. So the point being is that we can show the particles are moving in that orientation. Now we're not just talking about one particle here, we'd be talking about multiple particles. And a nice way of demonstrating this is with my Hague wave machine. I'll be using this for the uh, transverse as well, I mean the longitudinal very shortly. But you can see here, and I'll do my best to show you, you can see these yellow balls along here. Now I have to just turn this handle, it's going to show you how the particles might move in a transverse wave. So you can see there, the particles are moving up and down, but the energy is being transferred from my left to right, so from this side to that side. So as I rotate this round, you can see the particles are moving up and down, and the wave is being transferred, or the energy in this case is being transferred down the line. Okay? So that's a transverse wave. Next we're going to look at um, longitudinal waves. Now longitudinal waves are different, they still involve particles. So first of all, longitudinal. So a longitudinal wave. Now a longitudinal wave does exactly the same thing. It transfers energy from point to point. But instead of the particles moving vertically like this, they move longitudinally, as the um, name suggests, they move back and forth in the direction of the energy transfer. So, in this case, we, we can't, it's harder to represent in terms of a wave as we've shown there, but we can show it in terms of particles. So, what we get as a result of particles moving, this is like a top-down view of particles, they oscillate backwards and forwards, and as a result of that oscillating backwards and forwards, we get this thing called compressions and rarefractions. Okay, and I'll show you those words in a second. I'm just going to finish my drawing. So here we've got compressions. These are points where the particles are compressed together. And here we've got what's called a rare Factions, rarefaction, okay? Uh, not rarefaction, we're not dealing with fractions here, rarefaction. Make sure you check your spelling on that one. So, 
It's the compression and rarefactions that allow our energy to be transferred down the line in this case. So what we would be expecting to see is a compression of the particles moving from this point all the way down here. And it's because each of these particles is doing this from its equilibrium position. It's going to the left and then it's going to the right. And it's doing that. All of these particles are doing that at the same time. Again, I can show you doing uh, that happening with my Haig wave machine. I'll just turn it around to the other side. Um, so what we've got here is a situation where we've got all the particles lined up in a line. And as I rotate it, you can see the particles are going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Okay, so yellow balls are representing the particles. Watch them very, very carefully. And feel free to watch the, rewind this back and watch this as many times as you'd like to see this happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop that right there. And what you can see here quite nicely is you've got the um, compression starting here. If I rotate that a bit more, you'll see that compression move down the line. So the compression is now here. And if I rotate it a bit more, you'll see that compression move. It's now here until it gets to the very, very end. And hence the energy has been transferred in this direction this time. Um, so we can see that it's just an effective method of showing the energy being transferred by compressions of particles as they oscillate due to the energy transfer between them. So that is a longitudinal wave. And so um, we've got our two types of waves. These are progressive waves. They're progressive because the energy is transferred from point to point. And that's what's really, really important there. So key differences you need to be aware of and you need to have in your notes. Let's just make a nice list of them. So longitudinal is a type of progressive wave, same as a transverse wave. key difference is the movement of the particles is in the same plane as the energy transfer. Okay? That's because the particles are moving side to side. It's in the same plane, not always in the same direction, but they're in the same plane. Oscillating backwards and forwards, but the energy is traveling in that direction. Transverse, the particles oscillate at 90 degrees to the plane of energy transfer. Okay, they oscillate at 90 degrees. So, again, the particles are going up and down in this plane, just like that. However, the energy is still being transferred in that direction. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the two main different types of waves, longitudinal and transverse. Now it's very important just to um, have a quick think about um, these particles in terms of what they're moving. We want to talk about transverse waves just for a moment and talk about particle movement down a line. So um, just going to rub that out. Move the word transverse up. So let's look at a transverse wave being propagated. Now, if we talk about particles on a wave that's being moved along a line, so if we draw particles in a wave here, okay, and then after that there is no wave. So what we'd be expecting here is this wave is moving along these, this set of particles. 
So it's interesting to discuss what the particle is doing at any point in time. So we're saying that the wave is moving in this direction. So I might ask you, okay, let's identify just a couple of particles here and we'll talk about what they are doing. Let's talk about this particle right here. Well, no, we'll talk about this one. We'll go A. Uh, we'll talk about this one, B. And we'll talk about C. We'll talk about those three particles there. So, this wave is moving from left to right. And so what we're expecting here is, what is this particle going to, in which direction is this particle moving? Okay, have a think. Which direction is this particle moving? It's a transverse wave, so it's either up or down. Is it moving up or down, given that the wave is moving in that direction? Well, it's got to be moving down. Now, a lot of you are thinking, well, how can that be? It, but the wave is up here. It's, like it's going to move up to meet this. Well, no, the wave is moving in that direction. And if you ever want a hard and fast rule to discuss what particles are doing in a wave, they do whatever the particle has done before it. So, you can see the particle before particle A is below. And so as a result, it's moving downwards like that. And that makes sense because the wave has got to move onwards in that direction. So these particles have got to come down and no longer be part of the wave because these particles are going to become part of the wave. So particle B, what's particle B going to be doing? Well, particle B is going to be going up. Particle B is going to be going up because that's what the particle is doing before it and we need to propagate the wave. So if we imagine here that the wave is going down, so by the point in which this is down, this will all be up. What about particle C? Particle C, well, it's got to propagate the wave. The wave has got to be moving onwards, so that particle C has got to be moving down. So, have a look at this particle. What's this particle going to be doing? Or what's this particle about to do? Well, it's also going to move down. Because it's going to do what happened to the particle just before it. So let's look at what all of these particles are doing. This one's moving down, this one's moving down, this one's moving down. This one's going to start to move upwards because it's going to do what's before. It's just slightly above. Mostly just my bad drawing. This one's going to move up. This one's going to move up. This one, on the equilibrium line, okay, it does what comes before it, so it's going to start be, be moving upwards. This one's going to be moving upwards as well. This one's still going to be moving upwards. Upwards. This one at the tip, we don't really know. It's probably right at the tip, so it's probably going to be stationary for an instantaneous second. Like, kind of like throwing a ball in the air for an instantaneous second. It stays stationary before it falls back down. Similar kind of concept. This one will go down. This one will go down. This one will go down. If the wave is moving in that direction, all of the particles will be doing what the particle before it is doing as well, or moving into its position. And so what we see as a result of this is that the particles are moving down. This one becomes where that one was. This one becomes where that one was. This one becomes where that one was. And effectively, what you're doing is you're changing the position of this peak. And so as a result, the wave is propagated, particles are moving, and we are getting transmission of energy from point to point via this transverse wave, utilizing particles in this instance. It's important to note down these directions when that's the direction of the wave because that is pretty much fixed. But if you always remember that the particles move into the position of the particle before it, then you won't go far wrong. Okay. In the next video, we're going to start talking about some more wave properties and features such as uh, you know amplitude, displacement, um, getting some definitions for these word wave speed, uh, frequency and other words, and I'm going to look at phase of a wave as well. Okay, um, that's all for now. See you next time.